I thought we were the protectors of truth. Democrats, Republicans, you all lie. We, a small band of survivors, are on our way to the Steel City to find the resistance. Join us. Welcome to the Steel City Resistance, the ironclad voice of Pittsburgh, Hutch Jr., laying down verbal C4 to blow away the lies and the political tomfoolery. Your papers have been cleared. Welcome to the Steel City Resistance. I thought we were the protectors. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Steel City Resistance. My name is Hus Jr. and I'm located deep, deep in the subterranean bunker in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And I have an announcement to make, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it took me a long time and a lot of vetting, <clears throat> but I have finally found Ward's replacement. Uh, this man comes to us as a, a veteran of podcasting and the political, uh, the political world. Sir, why don't you introduce yourself to the resistance? I'm back. <laughs> I'm Ward Miller, also in the city of Pittsburgh here, deep down in Mission Control, ready to rock and roll. It's been a long time, and I'm ready to go. I'll tell you, it has been, and uh, we're glad to have you back, that's for sure. I can uh, quit boring the folks every week with just me out here. We'll get something, uh, get a little dialogue going. Yeah, but you brought a lot of class to it. You know? <laughs> I've I, I seen episodes where you were wearing suit coats and stuff, and I'm like, damn, he's putting in a dress code? <laughs> what, what's going on? I don't, I don't know if I, if I can come back with, you know, with the dress code and, and uh, you know, me and my Hawaiian shirts and my uh, it's crazy all, ball caps and all kinds of stuff. It's all a joke. I'm wearing shorts and the pro kids. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't have me stand up. I'll stand it. I can't get up that high, but <laughs> this is all this is all Hollywood, my man. Uh, I can dig it. Hey, uh, a lot of stuff's been going on. I'm going to save the best for toward the end here. But uh, looking at these show notes, and ladies and gentlemen, tonight, I have to tell you, you absolutely have to go to the show notes links page because the show notes are voluminous. I mean, they're just there's a lot there, and we're not going to get to it all because we're just not. Uh, even we, we're going to try to cover everything, like we say, but. It's going to be abbreviated coverage. Uh, but looking at these show notes, it, it, it seemed like this last week seemed like it lasted a year. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at these first show notes on here, and they seem like they happened a month ago. Uh, I was going over some different uh, sources, and I found something interesting. Uh, Obama has lost support from the United Mine Workers, from Goldman Sachs, and from GE employees. That's just, uh, that says a lot right there. I mean. Well, we, we had talked about this before I left the show. Uh, you know, the, the stance that the Obama administration took on, uh, on coal and, and the miners themselves, you know, they wanted to outlaw coal, basically, and that they, they didn't care what happened with it. And I, I'm glad to see that the United Mine Workers finally woke up and said, hey, look, this guy's end game is to end our li our livelihoods the whole, the whole country's like that i mean I, i'm i'm just uh astounded when i hear people talk that the level of ignorance uh in people around me it, they fall for this this stuff that they're they're running on tv this negative stuff it's it's uh it, it doesn't bode well for our future i mean there's too many of them i think they're slow, slowly starting to come around now i have to well, I, add that caveat well, and it's one of them things, too, where, you know, you look at, okay, take Goldman Sachs. For the longest time, Obama ran on the fact that Goldman Sachs was evil and, and Goldman Sachs stole all this money and Goldman Sachs was bad. And then he turns around and says, hey, how about support my campaign? Oh, sure. I mean, he was one of the most uh, donated to figures from Wall Street in history, I, I think. I mean, he, he was, uh, he does play both ends of the, both ends of the seesaw, no doubt about that. Uh, but anyway, I, I just thought that was interesting. Those are core, especially the mine workers. Now, unfortunately for the mine workers, the market is, is putting them out of business. I mean, the, pretty soon gas is going to be cheaper to use than coal. And, uh, just because of the plentiful uh, amount of resources that we have. Well, we, I mean, still, I mean, all the electricity, you know, it, it, it's one of them catch 22 situations where this government 
the well this current administration wants everybody to have electric cars well how do you power an electric car without coal you know you're, you're trading one uh asset for another uh, you know okay so we're not going to be using you know net, you know regular gasoline but you if you're going to use electricity you still got to coal still powers that it does and, and you're seeing a lot of uh, just because of the current regulations uh, we happen to live very close to the coal region the fields of West Virginia, which is I still I think it's still called the Pittsburgh vein, uh, but that uh, a lot of the older coal plants are closing, older coal mines are closing down uh, due to regulation, and and I think I'm thinking that the maybe you could use it as an export, but I think that domestic power plants, if the if the gas resources are allowed to be exploited. Not in a bad way, but if we're able to extract this gas and there's that much of it, I think they'll power it with gas. Well, they, they that absolutely could. I mean, it, it would be a probably a minor conversion. Yeah. With, I mean, something that's. Just, I mean, you just need something that's going to burn and burn real hot. Yeah, it was prohibitive uh, before because it was of the cost of it. it yeah. Was, it was the most expensive way to generate electricity was natural gas. But the thing is, you got the EPA out there, and the EPA is trying to strangle this. I mean, they have been from day one. Oh, it's, it's hideous. Even in yeah. our own city government. I mean, <laughs> you know, they make a ban of it from, from any shale oil exploration or anything. I mean, you, of course it's a city, but this city has, it has woods. <laughs> you know, it, it yeah. has areas where you can drill. That's why it's here. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I just thought that was, that was interesting. Now, Eric sent an email to the show. And I'm not going to read it because it was basically just a link uh, to a Pew Forum uh, uh, justification or rationalization. I don't know what you'd call it. It was about Islam. And I read through this thing. And it's uh, the problem with that. If, if you read that and believe that, they never mentioned violence. This is like 10 pages long. Never mentions violence. Never mentions genital mutilation never mentions pedophilia, you know, never mentions any of the things that I'm opposed to. And there's a lot of people, I think, that are looking at it that way. Like, it's just a, like, it's like Catholicism, but it's different, you know? Yeah, and, and that's wrong. Uh, that's wrong thinking. I mean, that's the kind of thing that the, you know, it, it's one of them things where you should know your enemy. Yeah. And I, I don't care how you want to look at it. Those people don't like us. It's not Islamophobia when they're trying to kill you. Absolutely. And it's not just a religion. There's religious overtones, but it's a political sure. system. It's a totalitarian regime. I mean, it's uh, if you looked at that Pew report, I mean, it showed different percentages of, of different countries and different beliefs. And we better start waking up to what it is. And I think we are. I mean, I think, uh, well, I'll get into Mitt Romney in a minute, but, well... I don't have this written down. I better say it before I forget it. Uh, no, I'll wait. Uh, anyway, uh, you, I, I've said we've talked before on the program, especially I remember when the uh, Arab Spring was just kicking off and uh, it was being uh, touted that it was being fueled by Facebook and all this other bullshit they were saying. When, in fact, when we did our research, we found that something it took something like 50% of, an, of a normal Egyptian man's salary to feed his family, as opposed to 14% here. And uh, that that was a major catalyst for people coming out in the streets and wanting a new regime was economic. And uh, I made the statement that we're the only country in the world that would ever consider burning our fuel source, our food source. And, and right now we have a, a pretty good drought going on in, in the country, and livestock farmers are seeking a pause in ethanol production. They can't feed their cattle because we're burning corn in cars. And, and the thing is, too, ethanol, it takes a gallon of gasoline to produce a gallon of ethanol. So you're really, it, it's really a wash as far as how much you're actually conserving. Take, take the corn that you're growing that you were used for ethanol, feed the, feed the cattle. Yeah. I mean, that, that just, uh, that's common sense, folks. I mean, ethanol is, is a pipe dream, and it always has been. It's it's great to say that the, this technology exists, but that technology does nothing. No. Except I mean, it, except it, starve it, the cattle. It starves the cattle. <laughs> and drives the price a, of it, corn up across the world. Yeah, and it takes a gallon of gasoline to make a gallon of ethanol, which yeah. is ninety percent gasoline. So you're not it, you're not yeah. saving any gasoline. You're not saving any. 
anything. I, I read a horrible story that a, a Navy destroyer, they fueled a Navy destroyer with this, I don't know if it was ethanol or some other biofuel, but it was 20. Now, you can imagine the fuel tank on this thing. Oh, yeah. I mean, we even have barges that have 120,000 gallon tanks in the where I'm at, but $26 a gallon. $26 a gallon into one of those giant fuel tanks. I mean, that's just, that's criminal. The guy that made that decision ought to be brought up on charges. Oh, I totally agree. You but know? He, he won't. I mean, no, it's, of course pro- not. It, it's probably one of Obama's cronies from could, Chicago who, could be. you know. <laughs> Follow the money. That's all you really got to do. I mean, yep. Uh, Kenny over at Israel Survival Updates, I want to thank you for posting our uh, show logos and links on your website. Thank you very much. We had a, a good discussion the other evening. I hope you're listening to the program. Uh, but be cool, man. You got to got to keep your cool. You know, we got it. We're in this for the long haul. We're going to do this. Uh, so that he's got a good website over there. A lot of Isra- Israeli type updates and, and different things. Yeah, I did notice that he put our uh, put a link for the show and. You know, to the uh, website and whatnot. That, that's awesome. I had to catch him though because his blog is political, political in nature, and he put Berg's Eye View up there first. I said, "Oh man, your 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 fellows ain't going to get the right thing there. You got to put this one on." <laughs> <laughs> Bunch of drunken yenzers on that one. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, thank you, Kenny. We appreciate that. Now, there's a, I tried to create, and uh, Ward, maybe you can edit it or something. I tried to create an event on our Facebook page. On the 24th of August, a gentleman named Dinesh D'Souza uh, produced a movie called 2016. And it's, uh, it's going to be a good movie. It's about uh, the way he's pushing it is whether you love or whether you hate President Obama, you do not know him. So supposedly I saw some trailers. It's going to be a really good uh, documentary. It's playing in this area. It's playing out in the Pittsburgh Mills. I'm going to it on uh, August 24th to check it out. You can... You can Google this, and there's a website for the movie that has locators for wherever you are, where, where, when the showings are, and whatnot. So yeah, let's we'll try and get a link for for that. Okay. So that and we'll put that on in the, uh, you know, with the with the show notes, so that you guys can just hit hit the link and go to a place that's close to you and check this out. Yeah, it it it's bound to be good. I mean, it's uh, you and I have both studied ex- extensively into the background of this guy and. If he has more than that, it's just going to be that much better. And if you don't know, if you think this is just a homie from Chicago that made it, you need to go see this movie because that is not the case. This is this is nothing that was uh, not planned. I mean, this is this is very, and, and I hate to sound like a conspiracy theorist because I, I, you know, it is what it is. You almost have it is to. what it is. Uh, it, it's also almost like the Manchurian Candidate yeah. where they got this guy. Uh, you know, and we have stories, and we and we're going to talk about that later. But I I don't understand how the Democratic machine and Harry Reid did it last week, saying that Mitt Romney hasn't uh, hasn't released enough taxes and didn't pay taxes for ten years, and they're really worried about Romney's taxes. Now the IRS has the ability to to investigate that. What I want to know is when are the Republicans going to start saying, hey? Let's see his college records. Let's see his college transcripts. Nobody's nobody's raising hell about that, and and that's one of the things. And and of course the media is not. The media is not going to do that. So it's going to be up to the the grassroots candidates. That's right. Or, you know, it's going to be up to to the people out on the street to say, hey, you know, you want us to vote for you. Let's see where you came from. Let's see what it's all about. Because I'm willing to bet you dollars to donuts that the reason that his his uh, College records are, or his college transcripts are sealed is because he came in on a on a foreign exchange student Absolutely. as a foreign exchange student. He there's no paperwork saying that he's changed his name back from Barry Soto, which was prior to which was secondary to Barack Obama. So he had his name legally changed from Barack Obama to get Barry Soto. He never there's no record of him changing his name back. There's no record of him coming back in, in into the United States as a, an American citizen, seeing as he was living in um, Indonesia. And in the 80s, he said that he went to Pakistan. He could not have done that on a U.S. passport. 
And if you check him out here, you can see that he's sitting a little too close to that guy from Pakistan on that couch. You know, the couch is a pretty big couch, and he's scooched up all right next to him. I don't know what that's about, but that's a, another story. He went to Pakistan. And I don't know, but that, that eases right into <clears throat> this next segment uh, where I have to say, I was, up until a couple days ago, I've been getting pretty depressed uh, at the McCain's and the the Romney Romney's uh, spokesperson came out and and against the ad that said that Rip Mitt Romney killed this guy's wife, answered that with if she would have lived in Massachusetts, the health care program. I'm thinking, oh my God, what is going on? We are freaking dying here. I'm so tired, and you're as old as I am, Ward. I'm so tired of these Republicans losing. You know, they do it to themselves. They shoot them in the gut, self in the goddamn foot every single time they try something. Uh, Ronald the, Reagan. The thing is, why do you have to, why does there have to be a, you know, well, if this would have happened, then this would have happened. No, no. Here, let's just talk the truth. That's all. all. Right? And, and all they got to do is come out and say, empl- unemployment is over 9%. That's all. But well, you're not Obama gonna... said that, that he that he killed this woman. Unemployment is at nine percent. Just use facts. You don't have to say, well, if this would have happened, if that would have happened. No, if is the biggest word in the English language that means absolutely nothing. If the Republicans want to win, if they decide they want to to take the White House back, it's very simple. Yeah, play the facts. But you don't. You don't, you don't take. You don't, need a, you don't take it and. and Michelle Bachman and Louis Gohmert went in there with a letter asking. I mean, it's 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 documented that Huma Abedin is Muslim Brotherhood, left, right, left, documented, end of story. Now start investigating it. John McCain goes against her. What the hell is that? John McCain is a freaking. He's he's lost his mind. Is what he what he's done. He still wants to arm Al Qaeda and the Muslim Brotherhood in Syria. You know. Yeah, that's that was another thing that. The, one of the reasons that I decided to come back is all the insanity that was going on. I had to talk about it. You know, I, I, know I, how you I feel. was sitting back on the sidelines for, you know, what was it a month, two months, whatever it was. Yeah. And, and just, it was one of them things where uh, I learned that this is very cathartic for me is for me to come out and, and just say what's on my mind. And, what McCain's doing, I, I don't know if it if this is harkens back to the, his days as a POW where he doesn't like to to upset people, or he's afraid to he to hurt somebody's me. feeling. <laughs> he upset I, me. I, I I don't know. I mean, it's just it, it's unbelievable. I, and he's taken hard stances against Islam too before. Yeah, I'm just trying to to figure the, out. I don't I think mean, they like Michelle Bachman, but or, or Louis Gomer, but both of them. That's fine. I mean, you don't, and that's that's exactly the kind of person we need. Oh, you're is right. Someone who goes, I don't give a damn what you think about me. I mean, you're I'm... gonna respect me, and you're gonna understand that this is what I'm talking about. And that's the thing that I uh, I like about Michelle Bachman is her. You know, once she gets a hold of something, and she's like a pit bull, she's not letting it go, and she's gonna make somebody become accountable for it. And the fact that that the John McCain rhinos out there. Or, or siding with the Muslim Brotherhood, they're siding with the Obama administration. That's the people that need to get their head out of there. And, and they stand behind Orrin Hatch, and they stand behind the freaking Arlen Specters and everything else. And I'm just so sick of it. I'm talking on Twitter with a young guy, and this guy's just every time he comes back to me, it sounds like a like a soundbite out of President out of Senator Dole's campaign. You yeah. know what I mean? It's, and this guy's only in his 20s or 30s. And, and he comes back. This this same old cocktail lounge uh, group of people got to go. They've been there too long. They don't know what they're talking about. Even Marco Rubio, he even stood up against uh, against Michelle Bachman. And I'm thinking, I, I was really, I was bummed out last week. I was. I'm thinking this guy, he's going to pick this Portman or he's going to pick the worst pick he could have picked was Governor McConnell, who who, who freaking totally set up the primaries for Mitt Romney to win. I hope he's pissed off right now. I do. That was that was terrible. That was ter- that derailed Santorum and Gingrich right there. I can't yeah. remember who was ahead, but one of them was gaining steam, and then they couldn't. It was it was Romney versus Paul. You know, that's the only two people that were able to meet all the new requirements. But and then 
He goes to Virginia to announce, and I'm thinking, oh, shit, here it comes. Governor McConnell is going to be the guy, or McDonald, whatever his name is. McDonnell. McDonnell. Yeah, no D on the end. But uh, he did something, and this is for all you rhinos out there, because this is why he did it. He picked Paul Ryan because he knows Paul Ryan will energize a Tea Party. You know, you, you, you can disregard that at your peril, but that was a brilliant pick. It was, he, the only well, way he could have done better than that was to pick Alan West. The, and the thing is, I don't think he did it as much for the Tea Party as as much as Paul's a fighter. Right? Paul, I mean, Paul Ryan is a fighter. Um, He's an economic and, guy, too. And, and he knows economics because, it, in fact, I posted a thing on Facebook where he, in six minutes, six yeah. minutes, he takes apart Obamacare. And that's the thing that nobody else is talking about. You know, and, and they want to paint a picture where – Paul Ryan wants to get rid of Medicare. No, Paul Ryan doesn't want to get rid of Medicare. Paul Ryan's just saying we can't afford Medicare. You know, you sit gotta... there, you listen to these Democrats. I listened to Debbie Blabbermouth Schultz today uh, in preparation for the show. And listen, Medicare. God bless you. I'm glad it's you. Better you than me. <laughs> Medicare is going to get rid of Medicare. If we don't do something to fix Medicare, Obama robbed $500 billion out of Medicare in the Obamacare. Yeah. I mean, if we don't do something and they get up there and I can't believe American Democrats are so stupid that they fall for this every time, every time they sit up there with the granny over the cliff. And uh, I mean, it's just it, it's horrible, man. It, it's something that, that needs to stop. And hope, well, did, did you see what they're doing to Alan West? Yeah. That, 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 the, that yeah. advertisement that they're running against Alan West That's where it's a, a black guy beating up a white woman. Oh, That's great. Yeah. An old lady. Knocks her yeah. teeth out. Knocks her teeth right out. That's just great. <laughs> yeah, and that's Alan West. It, yeah. He has a little more class than that, folks. But anyway, that energized me. Now I'm starting to see these rallies, and the people are fired up that are at these rallies. He, he, since I mean, he announced, since Romney announced that, that uh, Paul Ryan was his running mate, in that, in that time, he did that, what, Friday morning? In seven hours, he raised $4 million. Exactly. Seven hours. After that announcement, four million dollars on a Saturday. Yeah, <laughs> that was amazing. But uh, we're, we're gonna have to see how that goes. Uh, you know, uh, for you and I and a lot of our listeners and viewers, Mitt Romney was the second to last pick beside, be, in front of Paul, and it, it was going. He his numbers were going down and everything in the last week. Hopefully, uh, we can get a little, little more energetic. I've heard things. I've heard that. A lot of the problem is his money is he can only use the money he's received lately. He can't use until the general election. He has to, he can only use primary money until they announce, you know, until they nominate him. Yeah. Then once he's nominated, then he's got some money. <laughs> and they yeah. say that I, I heard a, a gentleman that lately has been sounding pretty good, uh, whose past is horrible, John Sununu, who gave us uh, John Souter as a, you know, he, he egged, President H.W. Bush on into into nominating Souter as a, Souter was one of those guys that didn't have a record really. He didn't have a long record, so they had to just hope he was conservative. He was going to be conservative, and he wasn't. Uh, but that's to me John Sununu. But lately, he's been looking pretty good. He's been a pretty good attack dog out there, and he said that uh, as soon as Romney unleashes, he's going to be every bit as ruthless as he was in the primaries. So I'm absolutely looking forward to that, and I hope they take some bold steps and don't just play the old Republican loser game. Well, here, here's the thing, and I encourage everybody to do this. If the, the Obama administration is dumb enough to allow uh, Joe Biden to uh, <laughs> Joe Biden to debate with Paul Ryan, TiVo it, uh, DVR it, whatever you got, get a recording of it because it's going to, for the comedic value alone, it's going to be well worth it. It will be. Because fun. I really see Paul Ryan just destroying. It'll be uh, good. Now, what we're going to have, Joe Biden. what we're going to have to look out for though is the, they have made it clear that the truth is no issue. They have made that clear, crystal clear, that it doesn't matter if it's true or not. For instance, that, that Romney ad that, claims that he, he killed a guy's wife because Bain Capital was so evil and came and closed down the company, da 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 completely full of lies. 
timeline was off. Lady died six years later after that. Romney wasn't even in the company when they did it. The whole nine yards. Every American that's watching politics has seen that ad, and they have not even bought that ad yet. They have not even. That's not a paid ad. It hasn't been released on any television. They got free publicity with that ad because of it was so controversial. Yeah, and it's all a lie. Right. It doesn't matter. The truth doesn't matter. It doesn't mean anything. Well, here's the thing. If I was Mitt Romney, my, my next ad would be Barack Obama killed my son and have Brian Terry's <laughs> mother on there. Yeah. And Barack yeah. Obama and the F, uh, ATF and Eric Holder killed my son by supplying guns to Mexican yeah. drug cartels. That would be a good ad and a truthful ad. Your weekly jihad report, ladies and gentlemen, from 4 to 10 August. 61 jihad attacks, 5 Alwa Akbars, 278 dead bodies, and 308 critically injured. The religion of peace, ladies and gentlemen, one body at a time. Now we're going to get into something here, and as I said, it's going to be a little bit abbreviated. Uh, but this next story, if this rings true... I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, we've been talking about Fast and Furious since June of last year. And there's a new development with this. It hasn't been treated really the way it should have been. I, I still think that uh, heads should roll for this. I do. I mean, prison. This is, this is that bad. But a high-ranking Mexican drug cartel member makes explosive allegation that Fast and Furious is not what you think it is. A high-ranking Mexican drug cartel operative currently in U.S. custody is making startling allegations that the failed federal gun walking operation known as Fast and Furious isn't what you think it is. It wasn't about tracking guns. It was about supplying them. All part of an elaborate agreement between the U.S. government and Mexico's powerful Sinaloa cartel to take down rival cartels. The explosive allegations are being made by Jesus Vincente Zambada Nebla, known as the Sinaloa Cartel's logistics coordinator. So if he was the logistics coordinator, he would know. He was extradited to the Chicago, to Chicago last year, to face federal drug charges. I hope he's got security. I hope he's got protection. Yeah, he just hung himself. <laughs> yeah, he's going to catch a cold like the Russian presidents used to do. Uh, it wasn't a, the explosive allegations, da 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 Zambada Nebla claims that under a divide-and-conquer strategy, the U.S. helped finance and arm the Sinaloa cartel through Operation Fast and Furious in exchange for information that allowed the DEA, U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, ICE, and other federal agencies to take down rival drug cartels. The Sinaloa cartel was allegedly permitted to traffic massive amounts of drugs across the U.S. border from 2004 to 2009 as long as the intel kept coming. This pending court case against Zambada Nabala is being closely monitored by some members of Congress, who, I wouldn't be Daryl Issa or Louis Gohmert, uh, who expect potential legal ramifications if any of his claims are substantiated. The trial was delayed but is now scheduled to begin on October 9th. Zambada Nebla is reportedly a close associate of Sinaloa cartel Kingpin Joaquin El Chapo Guzman and the son of Ismael Mayo Zambada Garcia, both of which remain fugitives, likely because of a deal made with the DEA federal documents alleged. Now, that is just uh, pretty huge. I mean, that's something that, uh, if it's found to be true, think of all the ads that you could have, Ward, that said that the DEA killed my killed my sons or daughters or how many people died because of those drugs yeah but the bottom line is who was in charge it, it, it all roads lead back to eric holder well it, it goes back even further than that if this if this is true and this timeline is accurate it goes back to 2004 and i just cannot for the life of me imagine that george bush would have been involved in this there's somebody no, rogue so there's somebody rogue somebody's getting paid well then again this guy has now been extradited. Now, let's think about this for a second. This is their way of saying that it wasn't them. This is their way of saying we can point this at Bush. 
You know, That's this possible. guy comes out of the blue and he gets dragged to, That's he gets extradited point. to Chicago. And then in Chicago, he starts saying, well, this happened in 2004 and it was fast. And now he used the name fast and furious and a fast and furious gun walking, gun walking operation. And at the same time, he said it started in 2004. There wasn't one. Right, in that's true. It was 2009. It started. That's right. So I think that, you know, and the fact that this guy ends up in Chicago, that's a little odd. That is a little, you know, odd. why would they extradite a, a Mexican drug cartel? logistics well, guy to chicago versus texas well just a little a little, a little background i heard it and it could be false but i heard a chicago dea the dea head in chicago apparently a lot of the sinaloa drugs end up in chicago imagine that but he said that this this uh i forget his name but he has that the chicago mafia has nothing on these guys on guzman has nothing on them. They say that the Mexican border is in the border of Illinois, that they're that that embedded there, uh, and they're that ruthless. It's going to be something to watch, no doubt about it. I mean, I, I don't know where this is going to go, and I don't care where it goes. If it goes to the Bush administration, all right. No, and, and I totally agree with you, Hutch, ex except for the fact that he used the term Fast right. and Furious, and Fast and Furious didn't occur until – Eric Holder was in office. And I don't think, I think his credibility will get chock full of holes. I mean, I don't, I don't know how that's going to go. Well, no, th that's why they're releasing it. That's the only reason that the media is carrying it. It's because it says 2004 and they can blame something else on Bush. Yeah. Because they got somebody that's willing to testify that this, the, the Fast and Furious started in 2004. And it didn't. Right. No, I mean, that was linebacker. The, that was linebacker. And. Those documents are unsealed and were released to Congress voluminously by the the current administration because they were trying to blame it on Bush. Well, we're going to watch that and see how it happens. It's going to it's going to come up before the election. It's in October, so that'll be uh, that'll be something to pay attention to. Uh, but it, it just seems like these guys uh, in the White House word that they're not uh, nothing's different, nothing's uh, transparent, nothing's the the. You know, we're going to post things on the Internet you, for 10 days. Well, yeah, like it was promised. Um, David Floof. Is that how you pronounce the name? Pluff. It, Pluff? Yeah. All right, whatever. <laughs> yeah. And it's the same old game playing in Washington. David Pluff, a senior White House advisor who was President Obama's 2008 campaign manager, accepted, listen to this number, $100,000 speaking fee in 2010 from an affiliate of a company doing business with Iran's government. David Plouffe normally gets 50000 a speech. As the Post reports, since Plouffe's speech, NTN Group has come under intensified scrutiny from U.S. authorities because of its activities in Iran and Syria, which are under international sanctions intended to limit the country's access to sensitive technology. At the time of Plouffe's speeches, NTN uh, had been a widely reported partnership for five years with a state-owned Iranian telecommunications firm. There were no ethical or legal restrictions on Plouffe being paid by or being paid to speak to the MTN subsidiaries as a private citizen, but for a close Obama aide to have accepted payment from a company involved in Iran could prove troublesome for the president as the White House toughness on its stance towards the Islamic Republic. In recent weeks, Republican presidential contender Mick Romney has accused the administration of being soft on Iran. Really, Mitt? You think so? I'll tell you, it's uh, the, the deeper that you get in, to, to these people that are around the president. I mean, remember, ladies and gentlemen, back when your parents said that you will be judged by the company that you keep? If that is applied to the president of the United States, these people around him, Pluff, Axelrod, uh, Carney, Ayers, the, what's the preacher's name? Oh, uh... Him? Right, Jeremiah Wright. Jeremiah Wright. I mean, these people... Uh, oh, Bill Maher. Yeah, Let's Bill Maher. Bill Maher, and he, misogynistic prick that he is. Really, and I mean, there's some really evil people out there. The one guy just stepped down. The regulations are, uh, but you know, when they step down, they never go away. Alan or uh, uh, Van Jones. 
I yeah. mean, the list is just, it's like a, a fugitive's list. It's, it's a who's who of dickheads. If, and if you, I've, I've studied a lot of organized crime. And, and Chicago had some of the worst. I mean, those guys would burn your face off with an acetylene torch, man. Those guys are something over there. And that's where all these people come from. And it's all intertwined. Politics and, and criminals are all intertwined there. Everybody knows that. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, that's what, that's, that was Capone's thing was he, he'd buy off judges, he'd buy off, you know, and, and they'd, t they tried to pro, you know, pose themselves as legitimate businesses. I mean, because that's the only way you can infiltrate. You got to be a legitimate business or else you're a criminal. It was but so if bad. you can pose yourself as not a criminal. It was so bad that Al Capone's bodyguard, his driver, Big Tuna Tony Accardo, just died a couple years ago. Never served a day in prison. He was the boss in Chicago for decades. Never went to jail. He's low key. You know, he was a, a beer salesman or something. They said he was. I forget what he was. But uh, they ran everything from Chicago West. You know, everybody always talks about New York. Freaking Chicago ran everything from Chicago West, the Mississippi West, including Las Vegas. They built Las Vegas. Uh, anyway, okay, enough on that. <laughs> Uh, in case you didn't hear it, uh, the White House is starting to distance, distance itself from Harry Reid. Jay Carney says he speaks for himself. Jay Carney's about, he's an obnoxious individual. But the charge is not that Mitt, Mitt Romney paid less than a factory worker or whatever, but it's a bit more vicious than that from Harry Reid. He said he has an anonymous source telling him that Romney paid no taxes for something like 10 years. So the president has talked a lot about cha the change in the tone in this town. Why hasn't he picked up the phone to ask uh, Harry Reid? You know, Fox News White House correspondent Ed Henry asked the press secretary Jay Carney at today's briefing, I think the idea that people tell Harry Reid what to do is inconsistent with what everyone here understands to be the case, Carney responded. Carney then referred to several campaign attacks on Romney such as paying a lower effective tax rate and outsourcing jobs. That's not the charge, Henry corrected Carney. The charge is that he didn't pay taxes for 10 years. Does the White House believe that allegation? Uh, yeah, I would refer you to Senator Reid. I can't. Only Senator Reid knows his source, which he has discussed, and I would refer you to that, Carney responded. Nancy Pelosi today said, Harry Reid made a statement that is true. Somebody told him it is a fact. Do you agree with that rationale, Henry Press Carney? I haven't seen that statement, Carney claimed. Again, I would refer you to Nancy Pelosi and uh, Harry Reid. Harry Reid says he hasn't paid taxes in 10 years, and that's just a fact. Henry asked, I think the president focused on, and you hear him say this every day, issues that matter to the American people, Carney said, suggesting that Reid's accusation is not an issue that matters. At this point, ABC's John Carl jumps in to try to pry something out of Carney. One more on Harry, on Harry Reid. It's a simple question. Does the president think that this allegation coming from Harry Reid without any evidence made on the Senate floor is that below the belt? Does that cross the line, Carl asked. Carney responded by saying that President Obama believes in full disclosure of tax documents when you're running for the presidency. How about education documents? This issue, the issue here is one of transparency and again, as the president sees it in regards to his candidacy, one, it is an important tradition. It allows the American people to get a sense of the candidate's background, Carney said to the press. Uh, you can talk to Senator Reid. I'm sure he'll address the issue if you ask him. He certainly speaks for himself. The president is focused on the issues that matter most to the American people. So that's a little, uh, that's all the guy does is he, he, he bobs and weaves and, and, and in and out. And uh, he's a worm. I don't like the guy at all. Well, I mean, it's one of the things where you say, well, I have this anonymous source, all right? So if that's the case, I could come out and say, well, I have an anonymous source that says that Barack Obama was, uh, you know, smoking crack and screwing little boys. And I'm going to protect my anonymous source. I'm not going to say anything. You so could, does that make it not true? You could probably get video of that. <laughs> Yeah, but my, my point is... Just kidding, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to keep this show above the keel. 
Yeah, but my point is, you know, these politicians will say, well, I have an anonymous source that says this, and they can say whatever the hell they want. And the story's out there now. Yeah, and so the story's, you know, and then it gets a little bit of traction because you get, they get questioned about it, and Carney's going, well, I don't know nothing about this. And, it's, it's and horrible. You know, Reed speaks for himself, and I'm not going to get involved in what Senator Reed says, and da-da-da-da, and instead of... Yeah, Harry Reid, you know, made the shit up. I'll tell you what, the, uh, something that I can't, I can't understand for the life of me. If my guy, if Mitt Romney, which isn't really my guy, but I'm going to vote for him, if he was up there and he was lying, I'd drop him. I mean, I don't want to be a person in charge that's just constantly lying. I don't see how Democrats can accept that. Do they believe all this stuff? It's documented. I mean, it just it blows me away it, it, to no end. Well, I mean, it's still nobody Nobody in the mainstream media has questioned Barack Obama's uh, Social Security card to this day. From Connecticut. Where he's From never Connecticut, been. where he's never lived. Right. And, and no one has ever well, questioned it, It's a fact. It's a proven fact by forensic investigators that the birth certificate Photoshop that he produced is not a paper document. That's yeah. a fact. I mean, it just is. And, and they're not reporting that either. No, and in fact, when when he was when uh, they tried to to uh, get him thrown off the ballot, and I can't remember where what state it was in. Maybe it was Georgia. They're trying to get him thrown off the ballot using, you know, Sheriff Joe's uh, forensics investigation and saying, "Look, this is a fake." His Obama's lawyer said, "We know it's a fake. We presented it as a fake." They said that. They acknowledged the fact that it's a fake, and they presented it to the American people as the truth. Unbelievable. Now, anybody that listens to this goes, you know what? No matter how you look at it, he lied to us. Whether over he and over. Us, whether he gave us a legitimate document that, he, okay, we're, we're going to say for all intents and purposes, yeah, he was born in Hawaii, and he has a birth certificate. Okay? We'll just pretend that. Because I'm not getting into that whole thing right now. But he presents his certificate of live birth, which he considers his birth certificate, which is by forensics investigators ripped apart and showed that ain't right. It's a lie. His lawyer admits that it's a lie. But he presented that to the American people as this is my birth certificate, and no one's calling him on it. No one's bringing this up. You know, the... the uh, Washington press corps, shame on you. You should be out in front of in front of Carney going, okay, is this the truth that this is a fake or is this the real thing? It's unbelievable. And, and, and call Sheriff Joe a liar. Yeah, I mean, not just the Washington press corps, the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. You know, every city and every I mean, their stories used to be broken by local papers. Well, no, my point is because they. The Washington press corps has Carney, and you make you call Carney out and say, "Okay, you tell me whether or not he possess he 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 presented this birth certificate, and he knew it was fraudulent, and he presented it as the truth to the American people, which would be a lie, right? Or he presented it knowing that it was fraudulent, and tells his attorney, "Yeah, it's fraudulent. We know it's fraudulent. Just let him on the ballot. He should not be allowed on the ballot because he can't provide a fucking." <laughs> valid birth certificate yeah i agree i mean it's uh it's off the hook it's almost i'm sure as, you're glad it had me back huh? absolutely <laughs> I, it's almost as bad as that tea party guy that went nuts out there in uh wisconsin that was a fun one yeah uh except for the fact that he really wasn't in the tea party uh u.s federal agents believe that the slain suspect in the deadly attack on worshipers at the sheik is that how you pronounce it sheik seek 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 Temple in Wisconsin had ties to white supremacist groups, uh, and a, a senior investigator said Monday. Special Agent Teresa Carlson, head of the Federal Bureau of Investigations Milwaukee field office, confirmed that 40-year-old suspect Wade Michael Page is the subject is is the subject of a domestic terrorism probe following Sunday's massacre. Time the fuck out. <laughs> They're going to call this domestic terrorism when this guy shot. How many guys? How many people did he shoot? Give me a number. Six. I can't, he shot six people. How many did that fucking raghead shoot down in, in Fort Hood? 34, and, five, something like that. Yeah, 35 people, and they call that workplace violence. Oh, it sickening. It made me nauseous. 
It that, did, literally. That is the reason I, po- I, I put this story up, because just because I wanted to call them out on this guy shot six people, and this is called domestic fucking terrorism. A guy shoots 35 soldiers. Yeah. While yelling, Alu Akbar shooting our fucking soldiers and he's declared uh, uh, you know he he was suffering from workplace violence fuck that yeah it's horrible and i mean if you think about it 30 to shoot that many people even if you well, hit he's changing clips he's yeah changing, I mean, even if you hit every single if you connected with every shot you'd still have to reload numerous times yeah. i mean those poor bastards in that room that, that's just uh that's unbelievable now we're going to kind of gloss over this next story because I want to hit one of these before we run out of time here. I guess uh, Obama closed some public Connecticut beaches <laughs> because of some Hollywood yeah. mogul or something. Yeah, some guy up in Connecticut shut down a public beach yeah. it, it's, that's funded by taxpayer money. He shut it down so that Obama could have a fundraising event there. That's something. That's, that's par for the course, though. That's the kind of... That's the kind of guys these people are. They, they just think they're above it all. And I'll tell you, I got to say this, too. This Eric Holder, he got to go to jail. I hope Daryl Issa is the, is the attorney general. He's, he's committed too many crimes. I mean, the things that he's said and done, it just uh, maybe it doesn't raise to going to jail, but I don't know. He's just an evil guy, man. I don't like him. He's a racist guy. If he was smart. He'd let them convict him right now so that Obama could pardon him when he got out of office. Yes, you're right, because I don't think it's going to be over. I mean, and my next story kind of goes to that a little bit. Uh, There's a lot of Republicans around Ward that just, they don't know. They don't understand what's going on around them. I don't think they get out. I think they believe things they see on the networks maybe or or something. But uh, I got news for you people. The Tea Party movement has morphed from protest signs to campaign signs. That's how a Texas Tea Party activist succinctly put it when I asked him what's become of the movement. He said, we put down our protest signs and picked up campaign signs. He said that former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's victory lap after passing Obamacare was a wake-up call. It signaled that mass demonstrations would not bring significant changes. Change would only come through the ballot box, where it began organizing. Hearing the call, the Tea Party vacated the town squares and hit the streets where it began organizing for the long term. It was always a grassroots phenomenon, so no territorial shift was required. And since it enjoyed little or no support from established GOP county structures, it didn't need to ask permission from the local GOP leadership or accept its judgment as authoritative. Consequently, the movement was largely a greenfield project, unencumbered by any pre-existing cadre of party hacks as it morphed from event-driven protest to election-driven activism focused on supporting like-minded candidates. Today, the local independence of Tea Party organizations remains, but communication between Tea Party organizations has continued to expand in scope and sophistication. And if you go to FreedomWorks, one of the better organizing functions or, or systems, uh, join Steel City Resistance Group on FreedomWorks. But basically, uh, what this said is that the, uh, those holding the mindset of the old establishment Republican Party, like Obama's Transportation Secretary Ray LaHood, soon to be former U.S. Senator Richard Luger, Bush 43 advisor Karl Rove, and others like them, they're not stupid. They know change is coming to the GOP. The question is, will they, one, embrace it, two, fight it, three, aim to co-opt and manipulate it? Options two and three will fail. Meanwhile, the Tea Party doesn't need political consultants or Republican strategists to chart its course. Political gurus like Rove and spin doctors like Carville are anachronisms to the Tea Party world. An August 1, 2012 Fort Worth Star-Telegram article entitled, Tea Party Gains Steam with Cruz's Victory, has this quote from a Republican strategist. This is a wake-up call for everyone in office in Texas and across the country, said Matt McCoviak a Republican strategist and former aide to Senator Kay Bailey Hutchinson, who is vacating the seat that Cruz heavily, is heavily favored to win in November. If it can be done here, it can be done anywhere. And that's a fact. And that's, uh, it's like I said, the Cruz victory, it wasn't a, uh, a wake-up call to Democrats. It was a wake-up call to the establishment GOP. You better wake up. 
Now, I got one little thing here at the end of this story. Last July 25th, the Small Wars Journal website. You know what? I don't have enough time for this. Go on the show notes links page and look at that story that I just quoted uh, and read the last couple pages of it. It's chilling. It is absolutely chilling. I, don't, I might have to bring it back next week. Uh, but I'm looking at the at the clock there, and we're not gonna we're not gonna be able to get this war because I want you to cover this most important story uh, from Colombia. Yeah, uh, Obama's college classmate says that the Obama scandal is at Columbia, and I'm quoting him now. He says, "I am the president. Uh, I am President Obama's classmate at, at Columbia University, class of 1983. I was also one of the most accurate Las Vegas odds makers and procrastinators." Accurate enough that I was awarded my own star in the Las Vegas Walk of Stars, and I smell something rotten in Denmark. Obama has a big skeleton in his closet, and it's in his college records. Call it a gut instinct, but my gut is almost always right. Obama has his has a secret hidden at Columbia, and it's be, it's a bad one that threatens to bring down his presidency. Gut instinct is how I've made my living for 29 years since graduating Columbia. Obama and his infamous Infamous strategist David Axelrod understand how to play political hardball, the best that it's ever been played. Team Obama has decided to distract America's voters by condemning Mitt Romney for not releasing enough of his uh, tax returns. It's a perfect cover. Obama knows the best defense is a bold offense, and just keep attacking. And Mitt, uh, just keep attacking Mitt and blaming him for uh, secrecy and evasion while accusing him of having a scandal that doesn't exist. Then ask followers like Senator Harry Reid to chase the lead. The U.S. Senate Majority Leader appears to be now whip, uh, making up stories out of thin air of tax returns he knows nothing else about. It's cynical, brilliant, and a vicious strategy. Make Romney defend so he can't attack the real Obama scandal. This is classic Axelrod. Obama has won several elections in his career by slandering his opponents and leaking sealed documents. Uh, not only do these institutions, uh, these insinuations uh, leak, ruin the credibility and reputation of Obama's opponents, but they keep them on the defensive and off Obama's trail of seal, seal, uh, sealed documents. By attacking Romney's tax records, Obama's socialist cabal creates a problem that doesn't exist. Is the U.S. Senate Majority Leader making up stories out of thin air? You decide. But the, the reason for this baseless attack is uh, clear. Make Romney defend. So not only is he off message, but he helps the media ignore the real Obama scandal. My answer for Romney, call Obama's bluff. Absolutely. Romney should call a press conference and issue a challenge in front of the nation. He should agree to release more of his tax returns only if Obama unseals his college records. Simple and straightforward. Mitch should ask, uh, what, would, what could possibly be so embarrassing in your college records from 29 years ago that you're afraid to let the American voters see? If it's that bad, maybe it's something the voters ought to see. Suddenly, the tables are turned. Now Obama is on the defensive. My bet is Obama will never unseal his records because they contain inf information that could destroy his chances for re-election. Once the challenge is made public, my prediction is you'll never hear of Mitt's tax returns again. Uh, why are the college records? Uh, why are the college records of a 51-year-old president of the United States so important to keep secret? I think I know the answer. If anyone should have questions about Obama's record at uh, Columbia University, it's me. We both graduated, according to Obama, Columbia University, class of 83, where we were both, according to Obama, pre-law and uh, political science majors. And I thought I knew almost everyone at Columbia. I certainly thought I'd heard of a fellow of political science majors, but not Obama, or as he was known then, Barry Sioto. Sotoro. Sotoro, whatever. <laughs> I've never met him, I never saw him, I never heard of him, and none of my classmates that I know of from Columbia have ever met him, saw him, or heard of him. But don't take my word for it. The Wall Street Journal reported in 2008 that the Fox News randomly called 400 of our Columbia classmates and never found one who had ever met Obama. That's stunning. I mean, that is absolutely stunning. This guy, 
And, and you know, like you said before, uh, and I'm sure it covers it in here, he didn't have good grades. How did he go from Occidental to Columbia to Harvard Law School without being a foreign exchange student and get, get going there on tax money? He didn't well, have any money. This guy has, has broke it down into a couple parts. It says, if you could unseal Obama's Columbia University records, I believe that you would find that he, A, rarely ever attended class, B, his grades were not those typical of what we understand takes to get into Harvard Law, C, he attended Columbia as a foreign exchange student, D, he paid little for either undergraduate college or Harvard Law School because of foreign aid and scholarships given to poor foreign students like this kid Barry Soroto <laughs> from Indonesia. If you think I'm fishing, then prove me wrong. Open up your records, Mr. President. What are you afraid of? If it's okay for U.S. Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid to go on a fishing expedition about Romney's taxes, even though he knows absolutely nothing about them, nor will he release his own, then I think I can do the same thing. But as Obama's Columbia class of 83 classmate, at least I have more standing to make educated guesses. It's time for Mitt to go on the attack and call Obama's bluff. And I agree 100%. I think I'm tired that of this. I think that happens after the, the uh, after he gets nominated. Once he gets the party nomination, I and I'm willing to bet you that between him and Paul Ryan, they're gonna they're not dumb guys and they're no. gonna go after him. And they've you got know, people. But, they gotta McCain, be listening. McCain wouldn't pick a fight. That was the problem. McCain, Sarah Palin tried to pick the fight, but they, they wouldn't even defend Sarah Palin. She was out there today and said that you know when they started attacking me, the Kane the McCain people didn't back her up. No. I mean, I thought that was horrible, too. I, I'm, I'm still not sure he didn't throw that damn election. <laughs> I don't know. I think that this this time, the, I, because Romney wants it, and, you know, when you got Romney and uh, Paul Ryan, they, they're both attack dogs. I think and one I thing think about Romney. I backing off right now until the election. Once they get the nomination, I think at that point you're going to see the election shift because then they're going to go into attack mode. Right now they're just they're just wanting to, to win the nomination. Well, that's that's possible. And, and, I mean, I think that if nothing else, Mitt Romney is a wholesome individual, a wholesome family man. I mean, being Well, a, that's the problem. Obama can't attack him. Being what, a Mormon, say? It, we looked into it a little bit. Being a Mormon is no joke. <laughs> I yeah. mean, I mean, there's some real, real principles there, uh, and uh, apparently, I heard another story that Romney has big time reverence for the Olympics, and he's waiting for the Olympics to be over too before the mud starts getting slung. Well, the, the we'll Olympics see. are over today. I know, I can't wait. Uh, but anyway, it's good to have you back, Ward. Uh, Great to be back. I hope you're in it for the long haul. We got It's not going to just be to the election. There's going to be. I mean, we're, oh, no. we're, we're in gonna, silly season we're right gonna now. We're going to hold Mitt to task too. I mean, this we said that from the beginning. This isn't some kind of you know Obama smear campaign. No. This is whoever's in the White House, be it be it, whether they have an R or D on their chest. They're they're in our sights, and we're going to follow them, and we're going to report on it. Yeah, I, I have to. Uh, it's for the country this time. That's what I'm saying. It, and, and again, the Republican Party has to change. If the Republican Party doesn't change, then candidate after candidate will get picked off by us. You got to understand. There's people across the whole country that are donating to local races, as I've done it yeah. myself. You know, well, and that's that's what the Tea Party is all about. And you know, everybody thinks wants to think that you know the Tea Party is going away. The Tea Party is not going away, folks. Tea Party is getting stronger. Tea Party is stronger now than it was in 2008. It's stronger than it was in in 2011. The it's tea, getting stronger every day. The Tea Party is America. The Tea Absolutely. Party is America. You, you guys, at, you guys, you political operatives, you know, that go to your little political science courses and graduate and then go to Washington and get jobs. You ran the place long enough and you ran it into the ground by going along to get along. And we know it. We know it. I guarantee you, you just don't understand what's around you. You don't, you know, there's uh, oh, they're going to find out. They are going to find out. They're finding out already. And, and you know, they can ignore it at their peril. Like I said, you can ignore people like Glenn Beck and Sarah Palin. You can call them crazy. You can do whatever you want, but I'm telling you, the game's changing. 
and I said it on this show numerous times, Sarah Palin's a kingmaker. Absolutely. She doesn't need to run for office. She needs to go in and say, okay, this guy, and once Sarah Palin gives her blessing, these guys win. That's true. I mean, most of the time. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for uh, letting us into your life for an hour. Uh, Ward, again, it's good to have you back. Uh, you guys can email the show, scrtv at hotmail.com. Uh, there's a number nobody calls. Uh, 412. I think it's at live.com, Hutch. Is it, what did I, I say? At, at, uh, you said at hotmail. It's at live.com. SR, I mean, yes. scrtv at live.com. My bad. That's why there's no two problem. of us. That's why it works out better when there's two of us here. So you can have that dialogue. Uh, go to our Facebook page. You guys are killing that. I think it's 59. Or something like now it's up there. It's getting up there. But there's yeah, a lot. Yeah, but the thing is they're sharing our stuff out, and so the the actual penetration that we're getting is going up, That's which good. is outstanding. Yeah. A lot of so material we, there. Yeah, if you look under the inside touch and you see how many, you know, how many actual oh, you know, I know, people it's five, are talking, talking about our stuff, yeah, it, it, it's ridiculous. And, you know, tell your friends about it. Uh, get as many people as you can. Let's let's load this thing up. Let, let's let's get this ride rolling. Absolutely. Uh, what else are we doing here? That's about it, I think. Oh no, Freedom Connector. Go join Freedom Connector, and uh, join Steel City Resistance's group. Uh, that that's moving up there. That actually has more than the Facebook likes, but it's all good. I hope you enjoyed the show. And Ward, you got anything else? No, sir. I'm over and out. Okay, we'll see you next week, ladies and gentlemen.